Samsung Galaxy A235G Review 1. Introduction, Specs, Unboxing Introduction The smartphones from the Galaxy A series have been known for their 4G-5G segmentation. We thought 2022 would bring the end of this, and indeed it was for the A33, the A53 and the A73. The entry-level Galaxy A13 and Galaxy A23, though, are still subjected to this treatment, and today we will be reviewing the 5G version of the Samsung Galaxy A23. The Galaxy A23 5G is the same smartphone as its LTE counterpart, something that's not often the case with these versions. Samsung has used the Snapdragon 695 5G chipset instead of the Snapdragon 680, which in addition to the 5G modem, has allowed the GPU to draw the interface with up to 120 FPS for some extra smooth action on the 6.6-inch PLS LCD 1080p screen. Samsung Galaxy A23 5G Review We appreciate the 120Hz upgrade as it can make things feel smoother, especially with the new One UI 5, with Android 13, update that's already available on this phone. The panel still has the same old-school droplet-shaped notch which may seem dated but is not a huge blunder in our books. The phone shares an identical no-nonsense design with the rest of the Galaxy A phones with a flat Gorilla Glass front, a plastic frame and a matte plastic back that's reminiscent of the high-end Galaxy S22 series. There is no water protection on the Galaxy A23 5G model, something that's reserved for the old packing Galaxy A33 and upwards. Samsung Galaxy A23 5G Review even though the Galaxy A23 5G is aimed at the entry-level market, we appreciate its camera gear, it has four cameras on its back, starting with a 50MP OIS primary, then come a 5MP ultra-wide, a 2MP macro camera and finally, there is a 2MP depth sensor. The 8MP selfie camera is a rather basic piece of kit, though. Other notable specs are the tri-card slot with a micro SD tray, the 3.5mm audio jack NFC, and the large 5000 mAh with 25W wired charging support. Samsung Galaxy A23 5G specs at a glance. Body, 165.4x76.9x8.4 mm, 197 grams, glass front, Gorilla Glass 5, plastic frame, plastic back. Display. 6.60 PLS LCD, 120 Hz, 1080 x 2408 PX resolution, 20.07 colon 9 aspect ratio, 400 PPI. Chipset, Qualcomm SM6375 Snapdragon 695 5G, 6nm octa-core, 2x 2.2 GHz Cryo 660 Gold and 6x 1.7 GHz Cryo 660 Silver, Adreno 619. Memory, 64 GB 4 GB RAM, 64 GB 6 GB RAM, 128 GB 4 GB RAM, 128 GB 6 GB RAM, 128 GB 8 GB RAM, Micro SDXC, Dedicated Slot. OS Slash Software, Android 12, One UI 4, Android 13 with One UI 5 update now live. Rear camera, wide, main 50MP, f 1.8, PDAF, OIS, ultra wide angle, 5MP, f 2.2, 123, 1 5, 1.12M, macro, 2MP, f 2.4, depth, 2MP. F 2.4. Front camera, wide, main 8MP, F 2.0, USA, wide, main 8MP, F 2.2, international. Video capture, rear camera, 1080p at 30fps, front camera, 1080p at 30fps. Battery, 5000mAh, 25W wired. Miscellaneous, Fingerprint reader, side mounted, NFC, 3.5 mm jack, virtual proximity sensing. The most notable omissions, if you've followed the recent Galaxy A phones, that is, are the OLED panel and the ingress protection. There are some other odd bits, too, 
the virtual proximity sensing remains as controversial as ever, and the lack of a real ambient light sensor is baffling. On top of that, there is no charger in the box. Unboxing the Samsung Galaxy A235 G The Samsung Galaxy A235 G ships in a small paper box, which contains the phone itself and a white USB-C cable. That's it. Samsung Galaxy A235 G Review There is no charger, or screen protector, or headphones. 2. Design, Build Quality, Handling Design, Build Quality, Handling all recent Galaxy A and Galaxy S phones are lookalikes, which is quite nice. Samsung has made one stylish shell, beautiful in its simplicity because of the one-piece rear panel, without a separate camera tile to interrupt the seamless design. Samsung Galaxy A235 G Review The Galaxy A235 G has a flat Gorilla Glass 5 sheet to keep its display safe. The plastic frame is thick, also made of plastic, and slightly curved. And then, there is the plastic back with a matte finish. Fingerprints and smudges do stick on the back of our black model, and if that bothers you, we suggest exploring the rest of the color options, white, peach, and blue. They also accumulate nasty stuff over time, but it's just not visible because of the lighter hues. The Galaxy A235 G does not feature any sort of ingress protection. This year Samsung is offering the IP67 rating down to the Galaxy A33. And now, let's take a closer look at the Galaxy A235 Guaranese. Samsung Galaxy A235 G Review The front is home to the 6.6-inch PLS LCD screen of extended 1080p resolution. It's the same size and resolution as the Galaxy A234 G, with the droplet-shaped notch included but the refresh rate has gone from 90 Hz up to 120 Hz, probably enabled by the new faster hardware. The screen seems bright enough and with punchy colors, but we will talk about these in a bit. There is a noticeable chin below the screen, and the size of the other bezels could be more minimalistic. But for a rather cheap smartphone and one with an LCD screen, these are perfectly fine. The earpiece is above the display notch, behind a razor-thin outlet. There is no visible grille. Samsung Galaxy A235 G Review The back of the Galaxy A235 G is a familiar affair, a seamless piece of plastic that has a small bump for its quad camera setup. Here you can spot the 5MP ultrawide cam, the 50MP primary, the 2MP depth sensor and next to them are the 2MP macro camera and the single LED flash. We are fond of this design and we like that Samsung has made it standard for most of its recent phones. This way, you get their best design from the flagship to the mid-range phone. Samsung Galaxy A235 G Review The Galaxy A235 G offers a tri-card slot that can take two nano SIMs and a micro SD card. It's on the left side. Samsung Galaxy A235 G Review The volume and the power slash lock keys are on the right. The surface of the lock key also accommodates the fingerprint scanner, it's always on, satisfyingly fast and with great accuracy. Samsung Galaxy A235 G Review There is a lonely microphone at the top of the A235 Guaranese. The primary mic is at the bottom, together with the USB-C port, the loudspeaker and the 3.5mm audio jack. Samsung Galaxy A235 G Review the Galaxy A235 G measures 165.4 x 76.9 x 8.4 mm and weighs 197 grams, that's the same as the Galaxy A23 and the Galaxy A13 phones. The 6.4 inch Galaxy A335 G is slightly shorter and lighter, though. Samsung Galaxy A235 G Review Our experience while handling the Galaxy A235 G is positive. It's a solid and well-built smartphone, one that offers a secure grip and feels safe in hand. We didn't feel we needed a case for protection or for improving the grip. 3 R lab tests, display, battery life, charging speed, speaker. Display. 
The Samsung Galaxy A235G features the same 6.6-inch PLS LCD screen as the 4G Galaxy A23 model, but the refresh rate has gone from 90Hz up to 120Hz. The resolution is up to PAR for this budget class, 1080x2408 pixels or 400 ppi. The screen is protected with a flat sheet of Gorilla Glass 5. Samsung Galaxy A235 G Review The water drop-like notch is back, and we can't say that it's a bigger eyesore than the widespread small perforations. It looks more natural, at least. The display supports a wide color gamut, but there is no HDR video support. There are no promises for specific brightness either. Just like it was with the Galaxy A23 LTE, the Galaxy A235 G omits both proximity and ambient light sensors. The proximity is what Samsung calls virtual proximity sensing, a feature that uses input from the accelerometer and the selfie camera, among other data, i.e. apps you are using. It's not as reliable as the real deal, but it does an acceptable job, most of the time. The absence of an ambient light sensor is baffling, though. The phone relies solely on the selfie camera for this, but that's not precise or quick enough, and the auto brightness control is all over the place, it may dim the screen in bright conditions, or sometimes the screen would become too bright at night. Let's talk about the panel's max brightness now. We captured 430 and ITS of maximum brightness when using the brightness slider manually. Combined with the rather deep black level, the contrast ratio turned out to be an excellent one at 1328,1. After a long battle with the auto brightness behavior, we were able to get a slightly better performance at 508 NITS and a contrast of 1254,1. The minimum brightness at point white was 2.9 nits. There are no color options in the display settings, so what you get is what you are stuck with. The good news is that the screen turned out to be fairly accurate towards DCI-P3 targets, except for the bluish whites and grays. Refresh Rate The Galaxy A235G has a 120Hz display, and the display settings allow you to choose between standard and adaptive modes. The standard, as expected, is fixed at 60Hz at all times. Samsung Galaxy A235G Review the adaptive is not as adaptive as the name suggests, it uses 120Hz for all compatible apps and the interface and reverts back to 60Hz when you are not interacting with the screen, you've launched an incompatible app, or when you are watching slash streaming videos. Battery Life The Samsung Galaxy A235 G has a large 5,000 mAh battery, the same capacity as on the 4G model and many other similarly priced phones. It has a rather efficient LCD screen and a 6nm Snapdragon 695 chipset, so we expected an excellent endurance rating. And we got one. The Galaxy A235G scored 138 hours on our battery life test, acing all four test scenarios, calls, web browsing, video playback, and standby performance. Realm 10 Review Our battery tests were automated thanks to Smart Viser, using its Visser device app. The endurance rating denotes how long the battery charge will last you if you use the device for an hour of telephony, web browsing, and video playback daily. More details can be found here. Charging Speed The Galaxy A235G supports Samsung's 25W fast wired charging, but unlike the 4G version, it ships only with a USB-C cable. You have to purchase the 25W Samsung PPS adapter separately. Samsung Galaxy A235G Review We tested the phone with the said adapter, and the charging speed is indeed impressive. The battery went from dead to 30% in just 15 minutes, while we recorded 58% at the 30 minutes mark. A full charge took exactly 68 minutes, an excellent speed for thus budget segment. Speaker the Galaxy A235G has a single, bottom-firing speaker. It scored a very good mark on our loudness test, and indeed, it sounds rather loud in real life. Samsung Galaxy A235G Review The audio quality is good, the vocals are good, there is minor bass presence, and the high range is fine, 
even if not great. Overall, we are happy with the experience as the range is balanced instead of going towards extremes. For software, performance. Android 13 and One UI 5. Our Samsung Galaxy A235G booted Android 12 with One UI 4 out of the box, but after the initial setup, we were greeted with a message that there was an update to Android 13 with the new One UI 5. We reviewed the phone after installing the new software. The first thing we noticed is that One UI immediately felt smoother and faster compared to One UI 4.0. And, of course, then come the new features that are part of this One UI 5 update, which brings a lot more features than merely updating the OS to Android 13. Samsung Galaxy A235G Review Core Android features are sometimes neglected by other manufacturers when they update their proprietary OS versions but Samsung diligently implements them to its One UI. This year's intrinsic Android 13 features aren't many, and most of them are focused on the visual aspect of Android's material design looks. And since those are not applicable to Samsung's own take on how Android should look, this leaves us with privacy and notification-focused improvements. Once you install an app and launch it for the first time, the system will ask whether you want the app to send you notifications or keep them disabled by default. Notification-related controls are now easier to access and will always appear around the top of the system menu. A direct shortcut to the app's internal notification settings can be found at the bottom of the notification panel. More granular control over what types of notifications apps can send, badges, floating notifications, and notification cards on the lock screen. Separate language control for each app is also available, which makes us wonder why such basic feature wasn't available before. Samsung Galaxy A235G Review Privacy-wise, Android 13 now deletes clipboard data after a while because malicious apps were often exploiting the clipboard as users oftentimes copy sensitive data like phone numbers, emails, credit card numbers and even passwords. Now, let's talk about One UI 5. As we already said earlier, perhaps one of the biggest improvements is the overall performance of the OS. Ever since the ancient TouchWiz, Samsung's software has been infamous for its rather sluggish performance. And even though One UI is a lot better than its predecessors, it's still lagging behind its rivals in this regard. Literally and figuratively speaking. One UI 5.0 aims to fix that, and it does so up to a certain degree. Samsung has optimized animations and transitions, and they are sensibly faster and smoother. Everything feels more natural. Other visual changes include better contrast, new app icons and illustrations across the system menus so that it's easier to recognize apps and read text. Once again, the accent color palette is automatically generated based on your wallpaper, but this time around, the system gives you a wider choice of color combinations and that palette can also be applied to app icons. Color Palette Widgets can now be stacked, and you can switch between stacked widgets with a simple swipe. Keep in mind that not all widgets support stacking, so app developers might have to get around that pretty soon. Stacked Widgets Last but not least, the default dialer now picks animated backgrounds for each contact by default so it's kind of easier to see at a glance who's calling. Unless, of course, you assign an AR emoji, a sticker, or a photo of your choice. The logic of One UI is still the same. The lock screen looks the same as before, with two monochrome shortcuts, dialer and camera. The side-mounted fingerprint reader will likely be the primary method of unlocking for most, but you can still use face unlock either instead of or alongside it. It can be more convenient in certain situations, but it generally is less secure since it's just using the selfie camera. The lock screen is largely unchanged, as mentioned, and has a lot of customization options available. There is no always-on display on the Galaxy A235 Guaranese. Lock screen and security options, Samsung Galaxy A235G Review Lock screen and security options. Samsung Galaxy A235G Review Lock Screen and Security Options Samsung Galaxy A235G Review Lock Screen and Security Options Samsung Galaxy A235G Review Lock Screen and Security Options 
Samsung Galaxy A23 5G Review Lock Screen and Security Options, Samsung Galaxy A23 5G Review Lock Screen and Security Options You populate home screens with app shortcuts, folders, and widgets. The leftmost home screen is Google's, as usual. App Drawer is present, too. One UI 5 Samsung Galaxy A23 5G Review 1 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 UI 5 An easier way to launch two apps in split-screen mode, a short swipe up from the bottom edge of the display with two fingers. The same action can be done through the recent apps menu. We've already touched upon the new notification features that come bundled with Android 13, but Samsung took the extra mile to offer some small improvements of its own. The first thing you'll notice is that notification cards in the drop-down menu appear with a bigger icon of the app in a corresponding color. The text alignment in those notification cards is also optimized for better readability. Notification Area and Controls Samsung Galaxy A23 5G Review Notification Area and Controls Samsung Galaxy A23 5G Review Notification Area and Controls Samsung Galaxy A23 5G Review Notification Area and Controls Samsung Galaxy A23 5G Review Notification Area and Controls Samsung is introducing Routines, a feature similar to Apple's Focus. You can choose a mode based on what you are doing right now and execute certain actions, change sound profiles, display settings, notifications, etc. For instance, the driving routines profile can be set up to turn on DND mode and launch Spotify automatically, for example. You can even trigger certain routines with actions of your choice, such as turning on the hotspot or airplane mode. Routines Samsung Galaxy A23 5G Review 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 Routines Samsung also made connecting with nearby devices a tad easier. In the Connected Devices submenu, you will find available devices for Smart View Connection, Read Screencast, or Samsung DeX, where available. Chromecasts are easier to discover and stream audio too. When you play sound from your phone, nearby Chromecasts will appear on the quick panel. And once you cast the phone's screen on a TV, for example, you can choose to hide your notifications so others won't be able to read sensitive information from your phone. Familiar proprietary Samsung features present in One UI 5 include the edge panels, the panes that show up when you swipe in from the side and provide tools and shortcuts to apps and contacts. Game Launcher, the hub for all your games, which also provides options for limiting distraction when gaming is here to stay as well. Otherwise, the software package is similar to other Samsung phones, with an in-house gallery app, the Game Launcher app and a proprietary file manager. Naturally, Samsung's internet web browser is also available. Gallery Gallery, Samsung Galaxy A23 5G Review, Samsung Galaxy A23 5G Review Game Launcher Game Launcher, Samsung Galaxy A23 5G Review, Samsung Galaxy A23 5G Review File Manager File Manager, Samsung Galaxy A23 5G Review, Samsung Galaxy A23 5G Review Edge Panel Edge Panel, Samsung Galaxy A23 5G Review, Samsung Galaxy A23 5G Review Edge Panel Edge Panel, Samsung Galaxy A23 5G Review, Samsung Galaxy A23 5G Review, Gallery Game Launcher File Manager Edge Panel. The built in photo and video editors get a couple of new functionalities. You can create a sticker from any picture. There are more ways to edit GIFs now, draw perfect shapes on top of videos and photos using the pen tool, and you can find 60 new emoji stickers to add to your stills and clips. Some small new functionalities spread across the system include exceptions for DND mode, 
apps of your choice won't be affected by DND, RAM Plus can be completely disabled through device care, auto background optimization that keeps the system running smoothly, set up more timers simultaneously, expanded search in the My Files app, redesigned digital well-being, etc. Edge Panel, Samsung Galaxy A2 3G Review Edge Panel, Samsung Galaxy A2 3G Review RAM Plus There aren't any major changes to the camera performance or new modes, but there are a couple of neat new additions. For once, it's easier to zoom in and out with one hand, and you can add a custom watermark or a date on each photo you take, and the telephoto camera now supports food mode. Watermark Samsung Galaxy A2 3G Review Watermark Performance and Benchmarks The Galaxy A2 3G employs the Snapdragon 695 5G chipset. This is a completely revamped chipset since the Snapdragon 680 behind the Galaxy A2 4G, one that comes with a 5G modem, more powerful GPU, and expanded support displays, cameras, among other things. It surely is not the fastest 5G mid-range chipsets, more powerful Exynos platforms can be found on devices such as Galaxy A33 and A53, and there are many Dimensity 920 or up devices out there. But the SD695 should be enough for the A235 g and its targeted price range. This Snapdragon 695 5G is based on a more modern 6NM manufacturing process by TSMC, it supports MMWave 5G connectivity, and it has a more modern CPU, A78, and GPU. The octa-core processor of the SD695 has two Cryo 660 Gold, Cortex-A78, cores clocked at 2.2 GHz, and six Cryo 660 Silver, Cortex-A55, ones, working at 1.8 GHz. The Galaxy A2 3G and its SD695 chip offer a newer Adreno 619 GPU, versus Adreno 610 on the A2 3G. The Galaxy A2 3G is available with 4GB, 6GB, or 8GB of RAM. The storage options are 6 4GB and 1 to 8GB. Finally, the SD695 chip supports dual 5G, Wi Fi 5, Bluetooth 5.1. NFC, GPS. Some of the competing Mediatek chips come with Wi Fi 6 support, so there is some room for improvement. And now, let's run some benchmarks. Samsung Galaxy A2 35G Review. The Geekbench 5 tests show the Galaxy A2 35G has a perfectly adequate processor. The scores are in the ballpark of its competitors. Geekbench 5, multi core. Higher is better. Sort by label sort by value. Higher is better. Sort by label sort by value. The GPU performance is behind what the Mali G68 GPU offers as part of the Exynos 1285G chip, Galaxy A33, A53 and the Dimensity 925G, Realm 9 Pro Plus, and the Dimensity 1085G, Realm 10 Pro Plus but it still seems like an adequate performer in this segment. GFX Car Chase ES 3.1, on screen. Higher is better. Sort by label sort by value. Higher is better. Sort by label sort by value. Higher is better. Sort by label sort by value. Finally, the Compound and 22 test puts the Galaxy A235 G in the middle of our chart, somewhat behind the curve. And 229. Higher is better. The Galaxy A2 35G also aced the stress tests we ran, and it promises long lasting sustained performance. The phone scored 80% stability on the CPU test and 99.7% stability on the GPU one. It didn't get hot, just barely warm, when running either of these tests. CPU test, Samsung Galaxy A2 35G review GPU test. Samsung Galaxy A235 G Review GPU Test, Samsung Galaxy A235 G Review CPU Test GPU Test While the synthetic benchmarks demonstrate promising performance for the class, there is something you cannot know of at first, 
and that's the real life performance, the day to day operations you rely so much upon. And this is where the Galaxy A235G fails. This is what happens once you set up the phone, put all of your accounts and contacts, and start taking photos and videos, the Galaxy A235G becomes sluggish, and there is a noticeable lag or delay at times. It takes 5 seconds to take a non night mode photo, the gallery takes a while to load, same for Facebook, same for your contacts, there is always some loading and waiting, or stutters if you are more impatient. We can only guess the reason behind this sluggishness, but perhaps 4GB RAM is not enough for Android and One UI to operate smoothly enough, not once you fill your phone with accounts and content. If you choose the A235G for your daily driver, we may encourage you to opt for the 6GB or even the 8GB RAM option. The 4GB RAM version just don't seem to cut it performance-wise. And while it's tolerable for a review week, it's a nerve-wracking oddity you'd be dealing with for at least a year or two. 5 Camera, Photo and Video Quality A Quad Camera on a Budget The Galaxy A235G has the same 4 cameras as the Galaxy A23, and while it's a basic setup, we do appreciate having OIS on the main camera. Indeed, the A235G features a 50MP OIS primary shooter, a 5MP ultra-wide cam, a 2MP macro eye and a 2MP depth sensor. There is also an 8MP selfie on the opposite side, in the notch. Samsung Galaxy A235G Review The main camera relies on a 50MP Samsung JN1 sensor with a tetracell color filter, Samsung speak for quad bear. It's a 1 slash 2.76 type with 0.64M pixels, 1.28M after the 4 to 1 binning. The sensor sits behind a 26mm f 1.8 optically stabilized lens. PDAF is available, naturally. This is the only camera to support night mode. The ultra-wide camera uses a 5MP Galaxy Core 5035 sensor with a 13mm f 2.2 lens. The focus is fixed at infinity. The macro and depth cams utilize 2MP Galaxy Core GC02 sensors. The macro camera uses a 26mm f 2.4 lens, and the focus is fixed at about 4 to 5 cm away. The selfie camera packs an 8MP Galaxy Core sensor with 1.12M pixels and a 25mm f 2.2 lens. The focus is once again fixed. The camera app is the same as you'd find on every Samsung phone these days. Swiping left and right will switch between all available modes and there's an option to rearrange or remove some of the modes from the viewfinder. Vertical swipes in either direction will switch between front and rear cameras. Samsung Galaxy A235G Review The settings icon is located in the upper left corner of the screen and gives you fine control over the cameras. You don't get separate setting screens for photos and videos since the options aren't that many in total. Like grid lines, location data, etc., the usual stuff can be found there. You can also turn on and off the scene optimizer. Once on, you still have to toggle it on a second time from the main UI, though. Keep that in mind. Camera app, Samsung Galaxy A235G Review 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 Camera App Samsung Galaxy A235G Review Camera App Night mode works only on the main camera. There's a pro mode for the main camera, too, but it's a rather basic one, you cannot tweak the shutter speed of the focus. What you can change is ISO, exposure compensation, and white balance. The full resolution mode on the primary is triggered from the aspect options which is a rather unintuitive bit. Photo quality The main camera on the Samsung Galaxy A235G saves 12.5 MP photos by default. The sample images we collected during sunny autumn day turned out great. There is plenty of resolved detail, low noise levels, good dynamic range and superb contrast. The colors are true to life, too. Sure. 
the corners are soft, and the camera may have a hard time resolving some of the more intricate detail, but we still find the photos very nice. There is a dedicated 2x toggle on the viewfinder, but there is no high-quality digital zoom available. The 2x zoomed photos are just upscaled crops from the standard output. There is a dedicated 50MP mode oddly placed in the aspect ratio menu. The unbinned photos are okay, but nothing impressive or useful in real life. The file size is large, while the detail is average. The 5MP ultrawide camera is as basic as they come. The contrast and dynamic range are acceptable. The noise is kept low, and the automatic corner distortion correction works fine. But the resolved detail is rather poor, and the colors are dull. Overall, not a great showing. The Galaxy A235 G packs a 2MP depth sensor, which assists the primary camera when taking portraits. And those turned out surprisingly good, the subjects are detailed and sharp, well exposed, with good colors and low noise. The subject's separation, while not flagship worthy, is still pretty good, and the simulated blur is quite convincing. The Galaxy A235 G also comes with a 2MP macro camera with a fixed focus at 4 cm away. Unfortunately, the photos are rather underwhelming, the detail is poor, and the colors are somewhat off, but hey, the dynamic range and the contrast are fine. The biggest issue remains the fixed focus, it's hard to frame your subject in the camera's sweet spot, and that's why you will have to take several photos just to be sure. The 8MP selfie camera takes good selfies when the light conditions are good but produces noisy and blurry photos when the light is not ideal. The selfies we took around our office at noon are average in detail and noisy, and the colors are not always accurate. But they will do just fine for sharing on social networks, but the image quality won't hold to any scrutiny. It turned out that the main camera's laid-back processing is well suited for low-light scenes. The photos are nicely detailed with good contrast and OK dynamic range. There is no HDR or night mode involved here, so there are clipped highlights occasionally. The color rendering is the only caveat here, everything looks either desaturated or too reddish. The night mode works only on the main camera and takes twos to shoot and threes to save the photo. It restores the clipped highlights and reveals more detail in certain shadows. The night mode also helps achieve a more realistic color saturation. Unfortunately, the photos turned out softer than we would expect. Still, we think the night mode photos look better for their improved colors and highlights, and we suggest using this feature when possible. Here are a bunch of 2x zoomed low-light photos, they are upscaled crops from the standard ones. 2x main camera, 12.5 MP. The 5 MP ultrawide photos we took at night have good exposure, but that's about the best we can say about them. The resolved detail is poor, the noise reduction has smeared both noise and detail, and the colors are off, too. Ultrawide camera, 5 MP. And here are photos of our usual posters taken with the Samsung Galaxy A235 Guaranese. You can see how it stacks up against the competition. Feel free to browse around and pit it against other phones from our extensive database. Photo Compare Tool Photo Compare Tool Photo Compare Tool Galaxy A235G against the Galaxy A335G and the Realm 10 Pro in our Photo Compare Tool. Video Recording The Samsung Galaxy A235G supports up to 1080p at 30fps video capturing on its primary, ultra-wide, and selfie cameras. Optical stabilization is available for the main camera. Optional electronic stabilization is available on the primary and the ultra-wide cameras, but there is no real-time preview, you will see the result after your video has been saved. Here are samples from the main and ultra-wide cameras to see the EIS performance for yourself. The video bitrate is about 17 Mbps, while audio is recorded in stereo at 256 Kbps bitrate. Both the main and the ultra-wide camera capture very good 1080p videos, the resolved detail is plenty for a full HD video, the contrast and the dynamic range are good, and the colors stay accurate. The ultra-wide camera offers a pretty wide field of view, and the corners are soft, which is expected for a camera with such a lens. 
There is a 2x toggle for videos, too, but it's a crop and upscale from the main output, so there is no point in showing the results here. Finally, the low light video from the primary camera is all right, it's bright and colorful, even if the colors aren't accurate. The resolved detail is low, and the video is noisy, though. Finally, the Samsung Galaxy A235 G in our video comparison database. 6. The competition, our verdict, pros and cons. The competition. The Samsung Galaxy A235 G starts at about 230 euros for its 464ths model, which is a great price for a 5G enabled phone on a budget. It offers modern specs like a 120 Hz display, a solid chipset, fast charging, four cameras on the back, and recent software. And we liked the performance, the battery life, and the camera experience for the most part. Samsung Galaxy A235 G Review It's just the UI performance is not as smooth as we'd like and knowing this chipset pretty well, we'd wager that the 4GB RAM equipped on the standard model may simply not be enough. Unfortunately, the models with more RAM are also more expensive, we are talking 300 euros and above, and this is where we step into the Galaxy A335G and A535G territory. The Galaxy A335G starts at about 270 euros for its 6 128 version, and in addition to more RAM and storage, it also offers an OLED panel, IP67 rated design, more powerful hardware, stereo speakers and even better all-round camera experience with 4K video capturing. We see no reason to get the A235G instead of the A335 Guaranese. The 664th Redmi Note 11 Pro 5G costs about €280, Euros, and it's a good alternative as the Xiaomi's offer has an AMOLED screen, IP53 rating, stereo speakers, and even faster charging. It runs on MIUI skinned Android, which may not be everyone's cup of tea. But this can be said for any launcher, really, one UI included. The recently launched Realm 10 has a 90Hz AMOLED and similar performance and battery life but it lacks 5G, and the camera performance is subpar. That's why we'd suggest looking at the Realm 10 Pro instead, which is pretty much the same phone as the A235 G sends the ultra-wide and macro cameras, but with stereo speakers and faster charging. If you fancy a different design and launcher than Samsung's offering, you should give the Realm 10 Pro a chance. Of course, the previous Realm 9 Pro and remains the better offer for having an AMOLED screen a more powerful chipset, and faster charging. It should be cheaper than the new Realm 10 Pro model, too. And, finally, the Moto G8 II deserves some attention for its 120Hz OLED screen, the same chipset with more RAM, and a similar camera setup. The Moto G8 II has a better selfie camera, stereo speakers, water-repellent design, and runs on a cleaner Android version. Its price is around the same as the Galaxy A235G, too. Samsung Galaxy A335G Xiaomi Redmi Note 11 Pro 5G Realm 10 Pro Realm 9 Pro and Motorola Moto G82. Samsung Galaxy A335G Xiaomi Redmi Note 11 Pro 5G Realm 10 Pro Realm 9 Pro Plus Motorola Moto G82. Our verdict. The Samsung Galaxy A235G is a well-rounded phone with a smooth running screen, likable design, powerful enough hardware, plenty of cameras, and a large battery with reasonably fast charging. We appreciate the latest software suite and the various fan-favorite features like a standalone microSD slot, a 3.5mm audio jack, NFC, and even the old notch shape. The 4GB RAM model is a bit slow, but it is also the cheaper one and it makes sense to get it if you are not too fussy about performance. The higher tier Galaxy A23s are already in Galaxy A33 territory, and that one is better in almost every way. Samsung Galaxy A235G Review And that's where the Galaxy A235G fails, it has too many missing features, and you can get better phones by just adding 30 to 50 euros on top of the A235G asking price. There is no water protection, no proximity sensor, no ambient light sensor, no 4K video capturing, and the screen isn't all that bright for an LCD, 
all these could be fixed by increasing your budget by a fraction. But if you can find the Galaxy A235G on sale for about 200 euros or lower, then it is going to be worth every penny as there will be no phone to beat it, stutter or no stutter. Dance like there's no tomorrow.